Hey everyone, Saints fan, back again with another GTA 5 video, and this video has been requested a lot over the past month or two. A lot of people have been asking me to make an updated money guide, so that's what this video is going to be about. I think the last money guide I actually did was when the VIP system came out, and obviously since then we have the CEO and the biker system, which are both great ways to make money, but in this video I'm going to be explaining the difference between being a VIP, being a CEO, being an MC, and how much money they make, in addition to also playing heists, and then I'll break down how much money you can get from doing each one. So this video is going to be broken down into a few parts. The first part, the differences between all of the ways to make money. I'm not going to talk about contact missions in this segment, just because contact missions are kind of outdated, especially since Rockstar have nerfed them so much. Like at one point in time, they were pretty good because you could just replay them over and over again without having to go back into the free room lobbies, but then Rockstar took that out. Then there was a way where you could put them in a playlist to get them back to back to back. Then Rockstar patched that. And then the final nail in the coffin, they took the freaking missions that were actually good basically out of the game. So there's not many contact missions you can play that's really worth your money because most of them for like 10 minutes, you only get like $10,000. It's, it's an absolute joke. So you can play them, but they're not great. Although if you do play them, just use the buzzer. That's like the one piece of advice I can give you guys. Now, the CEO, VIP, MC, and heists. So, objectively, the CEO is the best. It will make you more money per hour, per your time. And you'll actually see when we get into the second part of this video, it's actually a considerable amount more per hour than the MC business. VIP, it's kind of the same, but the MC business is significantly worse. The thing is, though, with CEO missions is that they're really grindy. And I mean really grindy. Like, you don't have time to do anything else if you want to maximize the amount of money you make per hour when it comes to CEO crates because you constantly have to be going back to your office to order new crates. You constantly got to be going out to get the crates. You constantly got to go to your warehouse to sell the crates. You know, you constantly got to worry about griefers trying to blow you up and make you lose your money. So there's just, there's a lot that goes into CEO stuff that, in my opinion, you know, it's just not worth it. I mean, GTA is the biggest game ever in terms of playable content and then just farming the CEO missions and crates reduces it so much that it's just it's kind of sad and that's why I'm not a huge fan of the CEO missions now obviously if you are a fan of that if you like grindy stuff then CEO missions are perfectly fine for you and you'll get paid the most out of all of these methods but I personally don't like that method now heist talking about them a little bit so heist actually throw a wrench into this whole problem because they're really good depending on what you do with heists. There's two ways of going about making money with heists. You can do the glitch route. If you were unaware, I'm not going to show how to do it, but I'm sure you can go out there and look. There's a Pacific Standard glitch, which basically allows you to replay the finale over and over again without having to do the setup missions. And I believe you make, what, like 400 some thousand dollars per person because the host doesn't make any money. So if the host sets his, uh, or his cut to 0%, and then you give everyone else like 35 or whatever the number is, you can make what I think it's like four hundred thousand dollars or three hundred something thousand dollars per 15 minutes, which in an hour or two, that can make you millions of dollars really easily. And the reason the host actually sets his percent to zero or is cut to zero is because the glitch itself isn't that hard. You just need that host to quit or unplug his internet. I'm not entirely sure how it works at a certain point towards the end of the finale, and then it'll register that he didn't finish the heist but then everyone else will get the money still it's really weird i've not done the glitch but that's basically how it works from what i understand and then that host can just replay this mission over and over again keep doing that same unplugging the internet or whatever at that part and then you make a ton of money but the problem is that's a glitch now rockstar haven't patched it it's been in the game for like half a year now the problem is that you actually have to get someone who's willing to do all this work and not get anything out of it so that's the that's one of the reasons the other way, or that's one of the ways, the other way to make money from heist is to just accept Pacific Standard Finale invites from random people, like, from free mode. It's not the greatest option because it obviously depends on people, like, random people inviting you. But considering the, the mission itself, the finale only takes, like, 15 or so minutes, and you're not going to be doing that much in the actual mission. If you get a lot of those invites, you know, you can rack up a decent amount of money per hour or per your session of playing. But again, that relies on other people, so it's not that 
reliable. And then talking a little bit about the MC and then the VIP system before we get into the actual numbers of it all. So the VIP system is is still a little grindy like the CEO missions because you're going to be constantly playing the game, constantly doing these missions over and over again if you want to maximize the amount of money per hour. The thing is with the VIP missions is that you can do it in an invite only session with friends so you don't have to worry about other people griefing you which is always great but another downside is that you're going to be replaying the same two or three missions over and over and over again so that's one of the downsides to the vip system and then the mc system as you guys know i've said it before the main benefit is that it's passive income you buy whatever the business you want hopefully it'd be the cocaine business because that one pays out the most and it's you get more for your money and then you just let it sit for like five hours and then when you're done you can sell it and make a decent amount of money. It's not great, as you'll see in the numbers. It's not great compared to the CEO on the VIP system, but the benefit is that you can do whatever you want in those five hours. You can play VIP. You could do, you could do VIP missions. You could do CEO missions. You could go AFK and do IRL stuff, right? You don't need to do anything and you'll make money. And one pro tip I'll say about being an MC and going AFK if you are not registered as an MC, you will actually not get rated. I did not know this until recently, but you don't actually need that security upgrade. So if you don't want to waste three hundred some thousand dollars on that security upgrade, on that security upgrade, just don't be an MC while you're waiting. Like immediately after you are done buying the stock or refilling your your you know your supplies, then just retire as an MC and you won't get rated. I don't know why that's a thing. Like. You would think Rockstar would have uh, planned for that, but take advantage of it while it lasts. Now, the second part of this video, the numbers. This is what I'm sure a lot of people want to know. So, being a CEO, there's it's a little complicated, but hopefully I'll make this a little easier to understand. You have the option of buying one crate at a time, two crates at a time, or three crates at a time. One crate is $2,000, two crates is $8,000, and three crates is $18,000. The way it works is buying one crate at a time is more cost effective, although buying three crates at a time is more time effective. Just to simplify this, go with the three crate option. People have done the math. It's just, it's worth your time. It's, it's more worth your time to get the three crate option than to do the one crate option. You will make more money per the time you put into it, and that's all that you need to know. Now, when it comes to selling these crates, I'm going to assume you're talking about a large warehouse. We're not going to go into the small or the medium warehouses. We're talking about a large warehouse, which takes 37 three crate missions, which will cost you $666,000. Now, once you get a full large warehouse and you sell all of those 111 crates, you will actually get $2.2 million. But the problem is you're going to have to subtract $666,000 from that $2.2 million because obviously you're losing that money in the process. So in total profit, you're making $1.5 million per full large warehouse. Now to actually fill a large warehouse, it's gonna take you roughly between six to eight hours to fill. And per hour, if you're looking for the amount of money per hour, just doing CEO missions, it's roughly 194,000 per hour. So let's just round that up and say 200,000 per hour for the CEO missions or for the CEO crates. Now what people do, and this is something that's really beneficial, especially to your bodyguards because they don't get any money basically from the delivery system, which is, is stupid, but that's, we're not gonna talk about that. After each time you buy a crate, there's gonna be a little bit of a downtime that you have to wait for the next crate. Do a VIP mission, because you're a CEO, you have access to the VIP mission. Do a VIP mission, which will actually make up for the buying costs of the crates and it will give your bodyguards some extra money which will make them happier to help you deliver the crates. And if you do that, if you do that properly, you do a mixture of the CEO and the VIP work, then your overall total profit will be around $2.2 million, which is around 275,000 per hour. 275,000 per hour when grinding relentlessly, I don't know if that's worth it, to be honest. But I'm willing to bet not everyone out there wants to grind for hour upon hour upon hour upon hour just to get $275,000 per hour. Like that doesn't seem like that much. And it's really not, which is kind of unfortunate the way Rockstar set up this system and the economy. I mean, going back to heists, you get almost $275,000 if you get like a 15 or a 20% cut from the Pacific Standard Finale. And that only takes like 15 minutes. So 
CEO missions, although you get a lot out of it, it does take the most work. And the one thing I have not mentioned yet is that there's a risk of you losing it all. It's not like MC or any of the other stuff where if you die with it or whatever, you don't lose money. With the CEO stuff, if you pay $666,000 to fill up an entire large warehouse and then you go sell that entire large warehouse and then someone blows you up, all of your money is gone. You can't get it back. You have to redo it all. And that in and of itself is one of the reasons why I don't like doing CEO missions because I'm not going to spend all this time to have someone ruin it, you know? So hopefully that explained the CEO missions. Now get it into the MC. So assuming you're gonna buy a fully upgraded cocaine lab, which is the best paying MC business, it gives you one stack of product every 30 minutes and it holds 10 stacks. So just doing math, it's gonna take five hours to fill on its own. Now for the most money, if you're up in Palito Bay or up in Sandy Shores, you can sell it to Los Santos for $420,000 and your profit per hour for this business would be 420,000 divided by five hours which is around 84,000 per hour, which comparing it to the CEO missions is a significant downgrade. But this doesn't take into account all the extra stuff you could do while you wait in those five hours. Basically any free room activity is at your disposal. You could be a VIP, you could be CEO, you can do any of the free mode events. The only thing that does not work is heists because that's not in free mode. And quickly, speaking of the VIP system, I've done a video on my channel and it's based off of the VIP wave method. I'll find a link to it and put it in the description if you want to do this VIP wave method. If done correctly, it has the potential to earn you around 200 to 210,000 per hour, which is actually pretty damn good considering the cost or the amount you get per hour for these other two systems and the, like I said the VIP you could do in an invite only lobby. In my opinion if you combine the biker business with this VIP wave method that's almost like 300,000 per hour which is more than the CEO business. That pretty much wraps everything up. There are a few things I'm not going to talk about just because it makes it a lot more complicated like for example you could run two CEO businesses or two CEO warehouses and then that'll make you double the amount in roughly the same time as it takes you to fill one CEO warehouse. So you could do that. Another thing that I didn't mention that you could add is filling up a garage full of those Sand King XLs or those modded cars that you can find in GTA Line and selling those every 48 minutes. That'll give you a little bit of a bump in you know the amount of money you make. But for the most part, just to simplify everything, hopefully this video helped you out. To summarize, the CEO missions objectively make you more money but they're really grindy and you have the risk of losing everything. So you gotta take that into account. The MC business, it doesn't make as much money, but you have a lot more options on the table. You can do whatever you want, including CEO or VIP missions, which will add on to the amount you make. And with the MC missions, there is no risk of losing it because you pay for it once and you're done. You don't need to pay for anything ever again. And then heists, heists are always gonna be there. Whether or not you wanna do the glitch to get a ton of money really quickly, or you just want to accept the finales from random people. Both are great options to make a lot of money. Thank you all for watching though. Please drop a like if you did enjoy and found this video helpful and subscribe if you are new to my channel. That'd be awesome. Let me know in the comment section out of those three though, or four I guess, including the VIP system, what is your way of making the most money? Anyway, that is it. As always, I will see you guys in the next one.